right. That's right. Uh, thank you, Lady B. Um, we have some callers on the line, so let's uh, let's talk to them because it, it, God knows there's not a lot to unpack this week. <laughs> Who do we have? We have uh, Steve from the Gold Coast. Excellent. Hey, Steve, welcome to the show. Hello, yes. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. And, uh, you know, I mean, you, you were astounded earlier that these people could be this incompetent. I mean, keep in mind that, you know, that this was not an administration that thought that they were going to win. And even election night, they didn't think they were going to win. And, and now we're ahead uh, about a year and a half down the road after the election, and you still have key positions in sub -cabinet, at the sub-cabinet level and key agencies that no one wants. I mean, this is astonishing because generally in Washington, D.C., it's very competitive. Right. People are out there sending you their resumes long before you even win. You know, but Donald Trump can't find anyone who's willing to play uh, at his level because his level, quite frankly, it's not the varsity or the JV. It's not even the freshman team. And these are the kids who gather together at a park on a Sunday afternoon to play football. You know, so <laughs> and don't get picked. <laughs> that you get. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, it's no wonder that, you know, when, when, they're, when they have to deal with a crisis, you know, the, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. They have no experience in this realm. I mean, I mean, uh, I, but I will say that with that with Cohen with with Cohen they do have experience with you know it's allegedly he is he's been Trump's fixer for quite some time. You would think they would have kind of a shorthand about this at this point, you know that they would know how to you know how to manage these. Guys. Now, granted, they have managed them on a scale that has entirely nothing you know has has everything to do with a. Uh, um, you know, uh, just a television personalities kind of a life. You know that honestly, he he skated by on, but not not on the level of a politician where you know supposedly your your morals are supposed to matter. And in the case of Donald Trump, the the fact that the evangelicals are lining up to give him a pass on this should make it even easier. They're even. I mean, it's it, you're watching these people screw up a free lunch because at no point, yeah. Even even a Bill Gates or Warren Buffett doesn't have a Washington press corps equivalent in terms of following their day-to-day -day dealings. Right. So when Donald Trump became the president, this was a whole new level of scrutiny, one which they weren't quite, quite frankly, were not prepared for. And this is why you have this sort of thing. And so I mean, I, and, and right now, you know, we've got several more months uh, ahead of us in which you know polls are going to start to come out, you know, and we're we're going to know exactly where we stand going into 2018. At which point, you're going to see a lot of people fall off with regard to their political support for Donald. Trump. Next, you're going to have a lot of people who are going to fall off because, quite frankly, they're looking to save their own rear ends, you mm -hmm. know, by cutting deals, as, as you pointed out. So, and, and next, you know, you know, someone is going to challenge. Right? I predict at least Kasich or a few others are going to challenge Donald Trump within his own party long before 2020. Right. And uh, in, in terms of the highest office in land. And so, yeah, there, he's got effectively a few more months left, in my view, uh, where he's going to be able to govern, uh, you know, with some degree of continuity and within his own party. But uh, after that, you know, they're going to be running from Donald Trump every bit as much as, you know, trying to uh, staying with him. And well, the tariffs alone, party, yeah, the tariffs alone have caused that right. kind of reaction. Yeah, and and but they but it, like a lot of economic policies, it takes a while for their impact to be seen because it's got to funnel through the the process of you know contracts being changed, money changing hands. Um, the, you know the the lowering of purchases doesn't happen immediately. As a matter of fact, you usually will see some sort of a bump in sales until the, if you don't if you know they're not going into effect right away, and that's exactly what happened. You had a ton of uh, a steel dumping happen in the last three weeks. Because they got to get in before the tariffs kick in in any way, um, and and then once you see them do that, then their negative effects start to show up, and then either the the Republicans will start saying "I told you so" or 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 just blame it on somebody else. Um, I, I you know I think you're right, Steve. I do think there's one other aspect that will happen as this election cycle goes on, and that is you will see a lot of news about um, how Democrats are fighting amongst each other and how um, the division in the Democratic Party, and you'll see a lot of um, sort of backstab fighting storylines that will diminish, that will, it will be an attempt to diminish the voter turnout of Democrats coming, you know, in the blue wave. That this idea that, you know, the, the concept of purity talks, all that kind of stuff will start to come home, uh, I'm, I'm, I would say around July, August especially, You'll start hearing it, you know, August being the uh, Tea Party month we always had during Obama. This will be when you'll see the most, like, 
are the Democrats fighting amongst themselves too much to govern? Can, are they capable of, you know, never mind that the governing structure of, of the Democratic Party has always been more sound um, and, and certainly more stable than the Republican Party um, because our last two Republicans to judge that on were George W. Bush 